Hello, my name is James Barry. I'm a professional photographer. Over the years, there have been various things that I've been taught or I've learnt about photography, and I've put some of them onto this video clip to share with you. In this particular clip, we're going to look at the subject of what makes a good image. If we see an image, we all know whether it's a good one or not, but why is it a good image? And we're going to try and analyse that question now. The first thing about a good image is that there's nothing wrong with it. That might sound very obvious, but sometimes these technical errors can be quite subtle. Let's take, for example, focus. The right parts of an image should be in focus, and the other parts should be out of focus. Let's look at this image here. The background is really far too in focus. It pulls our eye away from the main part of the subject, and it, it clutters the image, and there's no separation from the main part of the image, the Morris dancer, and the background. The background's very important, of course, and we wouldn't want it to be so blurred we couldn't see what was going on. But in this example, there's too much detail, and it actually means that there's no real difference between the main part of the subject, the dancer, and the background. Now let's think about exposure. In this photograph, it's very, very obvious what the problem is. The light coming through the window has fooled the metering system in the camera to believing there's more light around than there really is, and the part of the photograph that we really want to see, the people, are far too dark. They're underexposed. It's very obvious here, but sometimes this problem can be less obvious. Take this image here. Here, the building looks fine, but look at the sky. Now we look at the same photograph taken with a different exposure. Look at that sky, isn't it beautiful? But now the building is underexposed. So a good image here would somehow have wanted to have the exposure for the sky on the second photograph and the building on the first photograph. And trying to do that could be very difficult. But both the photographs we've seen have got technical errors. Now have a look at this image and look at the terrible lens distortion that we've got on the building. The top of it looks bigger than the base. This is because when we took the image the camera was pointing too far down and the lens distortion has created this problem. This is another type of technical error that we see on some images. Here's another one. Look at the colours in this image. It's wrong. We've got our colour balance wrong. And that's a problem you'll see an awful lot when you take photographs inside with artificial lighting. An image might be good because it tells a story. But if this is the case, every element of the photograph must tell the same story. Let's take this example here. The child's wearing a raincoat, but it looks like it's a sunny day. So somehow, when we're looking at that image, we're thinking, is this right? And suddenly we're worrying about that and not what the photograph's all about. Every element of that photograph must be saying the same thing. Let's go back to our Morris dance picture. Here, there are some people in the background that are not looking at the dancer. And we start to think, well, are they looking at something more interesting and should we be looking there? So here, the problem is the background and the people looking in the wrong direction. Here's a photograph taken on one of our training courses here at the studio. Every element of this photograph is telling the same story, but it's very cluttered as an image. There's lots of bits and pieces there to pull your eye away from the centre of the photograph and the central story. But still, it explains what we do here at the studio. Here's a public relations photograph, and every element of this photograph is telling the same story. We, it's very obvious that there's a pianist and they've been playing to people in this building. A good photograph should not need a caption. If you have to explain your image, it's a poor image. Another reason why a photograph may be a good one is because there is strong evidence of the input of the photographer. In this image here, the photographer has got a good relationship with the subject, 
the person they're taking the photograph of. You can imagine some banter going on here and somehow the photographer has made the child smile. It's, there's an engagement between the two people involved in this photograph. Here, the photographer has got the child on a swing and by doing that the child's having fun and again it's very obvious that the photographer has put some effort in. This isn't just a grab shot, this hasn't happened by accident, this photograph has been thought of and it has been engineered. It's very rare that we get a photograph that isn't very, very heavily engineered. Composition is one of the major elements of a photograph and there are rules that we can follow. In this landscape image we are pretty much following the rule of thirds and that is the fact that we have a third sky or two-thirds sky but never half sky. We should also always have a part of the image where our eyes can rest. In this example it's the, the, the lady with the dog. Once our eyes have looked all the way around the image they can come back to this point and rest on it. It's, it's, a, it's a base point and that is actually on the rule of thirds. She is a third from the left hand side of the photograph and a third from the bottom. There should always be a point of reference in the photograph. Here's an example which is where there isn't one and by adding one the photograph is much improved and you can see that it is right on the rule of thirds. In a portrait image if we are following this rule of thirds, the person should be pointing towards the centre of the frame. You can see that here. If they're pointing towards the edge, it pulls our eye out of the frame and we're more interested in, in, in following that line than we are the actual central image. Another rule of composition is the fact that the points of interest should never be on the same horizontal or vertical plane. Here we have three people and all their eyes are pretty much on the same level. And this is deemed to be quite boring compared with making their, their, these focal points, their faces, in a triangle. Here we have an inverted triangle which is where the child in the middle okay, is between the two adults. One of the main ways that a photograph can get that wow factor is by good use of light. And this can take many forms. In this image, the photograph wouldn't have half the impact that it has if there hadn't been that sunset. With a plain sky behind them, it wouldn't have had any impact at all. Good photographers will always shoot into the light. It's the way that we can use the light far more effectively than if it's behind us. And this, there's very few situations where this doesn't work. In this example here, it's a simple image of a chap drinking out of a wine glass. But the fact that the light, the sunlight is shining through that wine glass gives that photograph an extra lift. The sparkle from the glass lifts the image completely. Here, we've turned the flash gun off on the camera and just by using the light that's come through from the bonfire we get an atmosphere coming through. So often it's that flash gun that actually flattens and kills any atmosphere generated by the natural light. If you're worried that you can't take the photograph in natural light just take two, take one with your flash gun and one without. In this wedding scene it's the light coming through the window which makes the image. Again, if this had been artificially lit from a flash gun, it would have killed the atmosphere that it has got. A direction of light is just so important with so many images. Again, another wedding photograph here. But it's the lights coming from the disco, again with us shooting into the light, which actually gives it the impact. So in summary, what makes a good photograph? Well, when we look at a photograph, if it has impact, if it has that wow factor, then it's a good photograph. It's usually achieving that by raising some emotion in us. 
We might be angry at the photograph. We might think it's a beautiful photograph. It might invoke lust. It could invoke all sorts of emotions. But as long as it invokes something, then that is really the definition of a good image.